Instagram. Hey, Facebook. So a little different angle today. I forgot my little tripod stand at home that my phone usually goes on to do the live, but this might actually turn out better because you're a little closer. You can kind of see things better. So let me grab my laptop and we're going to get our recipe page in here. Let's get cooking. So we're going to make a pumpkin spice or pumpkin latte mug cake. Yum. I had this for lunch a couple days ago because this is actually a lunch recipe. So you can have cake for lunch and it's so fun. And then we're going to make a spaghetti squash lasagna bowl. So super easy. You could make this and bake it in layers like a lasagna, but today we're just going to make it super easy. Just put it in a bowl, make it look gorgeous. And of course, make it taste good. That's like number 101 with food, right? It has to taste good. Okay, so just getting the live up here. Turn my volume down or else you're going to hear me talking twice which, hey, who doesn't love that? Okay, we're almost there. My computer's frozen. Here we go. Okay, we're all live, we're all here, so let's get cooking. So what you're gonna need is a big mug, because you can make this mug cake in a big mug. You don't want like a little mug because this is a little bit of a bigger cake, or not like big, big, but you're gonna need a big mug. Or I found these little gems. These are microwavable little things. I found them at Aldi's. Aldi's has like a lot of random cooking ware and that sometimes they like never have it again. Sometimes they only have it like once. So I scored these. I think they were on sale. I'm not exactly sure. Will you post the recipe later? Yes, I can post the recipe later. I'll even make it a cute little thing on my Pinterest page and then we'll post the recipe. Then you can make it there also. So then you don't have to keep watching this and be like, wait, what did she put in that mug cake again? So I scored these little things, but they also make, I scored this at a uh, thrift store. It's like a silicone and it's microwavable, even though it's Hershey Kisses. Just don't look at that. Don't look at that. That's not, it's not our food. We don't eat that. But you could make anything in these and then the cakes would just pop right out. So this is microwavable also. Sweetie, hello from Toronto, Canada. Looking forward to this cooking segment. So excited. Thanks for joining me, sweetie. I'm so excited for you to be here too. Okay, so let's get right into our pumpkin latte mug cake. So I'm going to take a bowl. We're going to start with a bowl because then we'll scoop it into our... I'm going to use these two things. It was kind of fun and I liked them. But again, you could use a big mug. You could even just leave it in the bowl and just microwave the bowl. You could bake this also. I would bake it at 350 for about 20 to 30 minutes or until, you know, you do the toothpick test where the toothpick comes out clean. Yay, we have Aldi's. I'll have to check. Yes, check your Aldi's. You never know what's going to be there. I'm going to bring my laptop up here so I can see your comments also. You got to join the party, right? Okay, so we have our bowl. Move this out of the way. And we have our scale. I have my little scale here. So I'm going to put my bowl on the scale and we're going to zero our scale. And we are going to add three ounces banana. I have some banana left over from lunch. <laughs> 0.9. Now the riper your banana, the sweeter your mug cake is going to be. So don't try to do like a super green banana. That's going to be hard to mash and it's not going to be as sweet. So but you don't want one that's like total smushy and mushy and icky. Just kind of a little bit spotted, almost a little brown spotted or just pretty yellow ripe. So we want three ounces. Or if you don't want it super sweet, this isn't really like a super sweet mug cake anyways. But you could do a greener banana. So three ounces. I'm going to grab a napkin. Can't have banana slime on your hands while you're cooking. There's just some foods that are just slimy on your fingers. I'm going to tip this back so I can actually see it. Sylvie, hello from Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. Enjoying your ideas. Thank you so much. Hi, Sylvie. Thank you for joining all the way from Canada. I'm in Minnesota, so we're border buddies. Is it pretty cold in Canada right now? In Minnesota, it's like 50 today. It's been cold this week. I had to break out a jacket. 
get out the boots. Fall is my favorite time of year because you get to wear all the cute warm clothes. It's so fun. You get to wear a new wardrobe. And then Minnesota likes to decide, oh, no, wait, we're going to have summer just a little bit longer because it's supposed to be 80 like next week. So get to wear two different types of wardrobes in one week. Welcome to Minnesota. Can't make up its mind. Anyway, so we're mashing our banana. So then we are going to add the rest of our ingredients. So we're going to do three ounces canned pumpkin. Now you could use like a pumpkin pumpkin and then you roast it and then I would add a little bit more spices to your mug cake then because canned pump or fresh pumpkin just isn't as flavorful as the canned pumpkin is don't know why and it's a little bit runnier so maybe you might want to microwave it just a little bit longer but I like to use the canned pumpkin because it's ready it's there I don't have to do anything just open the can plop it in so we're gonna do three ounces canned pumpkin 2.8 oh too much three ounces then we're gonna do one ounce uncooked oats because this is our breakfast if you are gluten-free or you can't eat oats you could use um, oh what is that called quinoa flakes quinoa flakes or you could use grits or you could use there's many different types of whole grains that you can use Hello from Oregon. My family had to evacuate our home due to the fires here. So hanging, hanging with, with you to get my mind off of things. Thank you for your recipes. Oh my goodness. Yes. There's these fires in Oregon. We have been praying for you, man. That can be very oh, stressful time. So yes, we are with you. You're in our prayers. We're thinking of you and yeah, get your mind off things. It's gonna be okay. You're not alone in this. We're praying for you. You're with us. Oh man, that could be hard. I can't even imagine that. Oh, crazy times we live in. If it's not one thing, something else is happening in this world. So then we're gonna add one ounce uncooked oats. But I'm glad that you and your family are safe and that you evacuated and you got out of there. So that's good. Lois, hi Lois. She, Lois runs or er, created the recipe for Brightline's, no, the Brightline newbies page. That is such a fun page to see all the new people starting out with Brightline's and they find that page so fun. And Lois is such a sweet lady. I love you, Lois. So fun having you here. So we're going to add one ounce uncooked oats. These are just organic regular rolled oats. I'm not sure if quick oats would work in this. You could try it. They might work. Or even steel cut oats. That would probably give it like a harder texture, but definitely could try those. But I just have the organic just rolled oats. Those are my favorite. So we're going to add one egg. Crack that just right into there. When I first made a mug cake, my sister's like, wait, wait, wait. So you microwave this and there's an egg in there. Isn't that nasty? But you don't even notice. It cooks in just perfectly and it makes these fluffy little cakes. It's just perfect. So now we're going to add a pinch of sea salt. We always add salt to things because it brings out the sweetness of any, any baking things. It just brings out the sweetness. So I like to get pink Himalayan sea salt and I like to get it the coarse. It just tastes richer than when you get it already ground. Then we're going to add, so you could add these things separately, but I made a pumpkin spice blend, mm -hmm. which is, you can either buy a pumpkin spice blend or just Google pumpkin spice blend and you could just make it. So it's literally just allspice, ginger, and then cardamom. So maybe we're going to use the chai spice blend instead because we want that cardamom and we want it like um, a latte. So instead of pumpkin spice, chai spice blend, you can find the recipe for your own chai spice blend. I'm not even sure if it's even sold in stores. I just Googled it and made my own. But I made a recipe for all of you. You can find it on my website, weightlossrecipescookbook.com, and it's in the Pinterest tab of the recipe page, or of my menu on there. And it's in the Pinterest recipes, and it'll be chai spice. Super easy. And then I like to just keep it in a container, and then I top, I sprinkle yogurt with it. I put it on everything. It's so yummy. 
you could sprinkle it on your coffee in the morning because it'll make it like a chai latte. It's so good. So you could do it yourself. Just do a pinch of allspice ginger cardamom and then a half a teaspoon of cinnamon and nutmeg. Or I'm just going to do one teaspoon of this chai spice just to make it easy on myself. Maybe I'll do, yeah, one teaspoon, a teaspoon and a half, because if it's a half teaspoon of cinnamon and nutmeg, I'm going to do one and a half. Put that back. And then we're going to add a half a teaspoon of instant coffee. This is where it gets the chai spice latte flavor. And okay, so instant coffee does not taste like coffee to me at all. We're going to add a half a teaspoon of instant coffee. It just gives it this warm, mellow, just kind of really rich flavor in there, but it doesn't taste like coffee at all. So if you're not a coffee fan, just try it. It's good. I made my sister hates coffee. She might be watching, but she hates coffee. And I've made her things and put instant coffee in it. She didn't even know. So that's how much or skip the instant coffee. Just do the chai spice. Lois, thank you for you and your kind words. Looking forward to receiving your volume eight. Yes, me too. It's in, so it was in line. There was one above it to be printed first ahead of order. So vo the volume eight is this next order just waiting in COVID waiting land printing time. So hopefully it'll be printed really soon and then it'll finally arrive to me and then you will get your books out or you can get volume eight now on barnesandnoble.com or you can wait and pre-order for me and then I'll ship them out to you as soon as they arrive. So they are in line right now. They're just waiting to be printed and shipped to me. So we're one step closer to volume eight brand new recipes. They're cinnamon ginger donuts. Those are amazing. They taste like old fashioned gingerbread men. My dad loves when he was growing up, he really liked old fashioned gingerbread men. So I'm like, oh, I gotta make him these donuts. He liked it so much and he's not, he doesn't do no sugar, no flour. He just kind of, he's a guy, he eats whatever. So that's fun. Your hair looks adorable. Oh, thank you, Life on Binge. Thank you, Kathy. That's so nice of you. Candace, you are the cutest. Candace, right back at you. You are adorable too. If you haven't found, if you haven't looked at Candace's cookbook, it's Brilliant Brain Cookbook, you got to look it up. Her recipes are delicious. They're simple and she's adorable too. And Life on Binge, Go to her website too, lifeonbinge.com. She makes 100-day food planners. I have some in my room. I should bring one out and show you. They're gorgeous. They have like 100 days in there. You can journal. You can write down all your foods and stuff. So cool. So check out her website. Check out Candace's cookbooks. They're amazing. You can never have enough recipes ever, right? Because if we're going to eat this way forever, you need three recipes a day three meals a day for forever. That's a lot of recipes. So you can never have enough of them. I talked so much, my scale turned off. So we're going to turn that back on. Back to what we were doing. So we got our pumpkin, we got our banana, we got our oats and our egg. We got all our spices. So now we're going to mix it up. So we're just going to mash this in here. Marcy, hey Natalie, I'm down 20 pounds as of this morning. Yay! Thank you for your awesome cookbooks. Yay! Scale victory right there. 20 whole pounds. That is amazing. That is like a small child. You just lost like a small child. Say goodbye to that forever. And is it true that they say that 10 pounds is one size? So you lost two sizes of clothes. So exciting for you. I just love, it's so fun. I love you guys. 20 whole pounds. That is amazing. 20 and on to the rest. You're gonna, you're rocking this girl. Aren't weigh days fun sometimes? Sometimes you gotta just kind of, okay, that's just what the scale says. That doesn't mean that that's my worth or anything. And then some days you see it and it's down and you're like, yes, just fuels you to eat this way forever. Gail, Central Florida here. Our winter lasts from December to February. Same clothes are all year long and flip flops with the socks if it's really cold. <laughs> flip flops and socks, that's great. 60 degrees, love your cooking with us. So fun having you, Gail, here from Florida. We don't get to have one outfit of clothes in Minnesota here. You need like spring, summer, and then winter. So my whole closet's mostly winter, but it's great. I wouldn't give it up for the world because we don't have 
poisonous things. I will, I really like our winters. It's beautiful waking up and all the trees are frosted and the snow and it's just fresh and it's sparkling. Oh, you just want to grab your cup of coffee, a big warm blanket and just snuggle up. It's, it's the best. But Florida is gorgeous too. You get nice warm, you get the beaches, you get all that stuff, you get alligators. That's always fun. And you get to wear flip-flops in the winter with socks. I mean, that is the best. So now I'm going to lightly oil my little things. I'm not sure if you even have to oil it because when you microwave it, it just kind of, I don't know, it just kind of, it doesn't really stick to things. So I haven't tried these without oiling them, just to be safe, because why change something when you're doing it live and then make it an adventure? Candace, your Minnesota accent is the best. Well, thanks. Don't you know? You betcha. Welcome to Minnesota, all the way from Tennessee. Yeah, it's Tennessee, right? Something like that. Hi, Natalie from Indiana. Hoosiers. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Hi, Sherry. So fun having you here. Okay, so we're gonna I'm gonna divide this half and half in each because it didn't fit in just one because it's how much cake we get to have. But you could just do it in a big mug or leave it in the bowl. Just microwave the whole bowl. Whatever you want to do, whatever floats your goat. So we're gonna just do half and half in each. I opened another can of pumpkin, so I went on like a pumpkin kick, and then this recipe came out of that, and now I just opened another can of pumpkin. And it's not like, oh, it's the small, cute little can of pumpkin. No, it's the big can of pumpkin. So I'm on some pumpkin kicks right now, so new pumpkin recipes coming from everywhere. Sweet, savory, all of them. So I'm just going to kind of press them into my little things. Can you see that? Aren't they cute? And then I'm going to sprinkle it with a little bit more cinnamon, just on top. Because can you really have enough cinnamon? It's kind of like garlic. You can never really have too much garlic. Tandalyn, hey, from Texas. Hey, Tandalyn, it's so fun having you here. Oh, good, Candace, it was Tennessee. I'm like, I know it's something down south, and I know it's something with a T, so I'm going to go with Tennessee. No, it's right. <laughs> Kimberly, northern Ontario here. Sounds like we have similar wardrobes. Yep, Canada, you understand us Minnesotans. We're kind of like... We're, we're in this together with the long winters. Tamara, hi Natalie, where did you find your pants? These I found at Aldi's. Aldi's has such random things, but it's so fun. You just gotta kinda look down every aisle every time you go, cause they're gonna have different things every time you're there. Nicole, question. I guess this recipe, oops, I guess this recipe wouldn't work for a waffle. I was experimenting and made up a recipe with some amount of banana with same amount of banana, oats, and canned pumpkin. I added baking soda, salt, pumpkin pie spice, and pumpkin flavor extract. Waffle was a disaster. Any ideas why? Oh, I forgot the, uh, the maple extract. Thank you for saying that. I'm just going to pour it on top and just kind of stir it in a little. Just splash here. So... Let me pop this in the microwave and then we'll talk about waffles because I have a passion for waffles and I've done everything to mess them up. So you're going to learn from failed experiences, but sometimes those are the best to learn from. Bot, Bativia, New York. Sorry if I totally failed pronouncing where you're from, Tina, but I'm glad you're here from New York. Welcome. New York has snow in winters. Samantha, hi from Wisconsin. Hey, Samantha, welcome. Okay, so I'm gonna pop these in the microwave four minutes. I'm gonna put both in there, they both fit. So we're gonna do four minutes. Again, you could bake this 350 for like 20, 30 minutes, but who doesn't wanna do it for four minutes and it's so easy. Nicole, oh, and I put an egg. Okay, so waffles. A waffle maker can be the worst or it can be your best friend. So here's some tips. Make sure that it's really hot and it's oiled before you put anything in it. So have it plugged in, have it heating up while you're mixing all your stuff. It should be heated by then and make sure it's lightly oiled. I just spray it with some olive oil spray. Then when you pour your thing in, just kind of pour it in, spread it out just a little bit. Don't like pick with it too much. Don't mess with it too much. Close that lid, no peeking. 
don't look at it don't even like antagonize it just leave it sit there until like the steam stops coming out the sides i'd say like seven to ten minutes you want a long time especially with pumpkin pumpkin can be a little bit moist and kind of just really wet so let it sit there a long time then when the steam stops coming out leave it in there a little bit longer because you can't really overcook a waffle you can but you can't so leave it just sitting there no peeking then when it's finally done you're going to want to open that lid really slowly and peek and see if there's any like pieces stuck because if there's stuck pieces take a fork and just kind of lightly pull those down and then it should just open really nice because i have made pumpkin waffles it's in one of my recipe books i'm not sure which one there's like over 300 recipes and i don't really remember which ones in which volume but you could look through them or look you'll find it it's somewhere in there so i have made that you just yeah you gotta cook it really long oops i peaked yes i've done the same thing because you're like oh is it done i don't know there's no timer on it and then you peek and then it like set well i don't know what it does it makes it angry waffles have a mind of their own so yeah no peeking you can't peek or else your waffles are just they're shot they're dead then but they'll still taste good it'll just kind of be a bowl of broken up pieces of sadness but it'll still taste good sylvia i did a similar recipe for the waffle with three ounces of fruit only then add three ounces of fruit after it's cooked yes that's good too and then you have your fruit on top frozen fruit is like one of the best things because it gets like all juicy and delicious and then you pour it on top mm, so good ne noemi i'm sorry if i totally mispronounced your name usually sunny california welcome from southern california it must be a cloudy day there it's a sunny day in minnesota so we must have taken all your beautiful sun today but it's still really cold so you got the heat we'll take the cold jill she's waving hi jill okay so we got one minute left while that's going i'm going to take another bowl and i'm going to kind of start on our spaghetti squash lasagna bowl so i have roasted some spaghetti squash fresh from the garden you can't go wrong with that so what i did was i preheated my oven to 375 Kimberly, it makes it angry. It does. It really does. Your waffles can get angry at you and just say, nope, no waffles today. So they can be very persnickety. The fires took our son. Oh no, I saw that on Facebook. I'm so sorry. A lady's watching from Oregon and she has some fires there too. They had to evacuate, but you guys are all in our prayers with all these fires, especially California again with the fires. I think what, it was just a couple months ago that you guys had fires before. Surprised there's anything left to burn there. My goodness, you guys have a lot of fires. Jill, yay from Ohio. I can't pronounce where you're from, but that's okay. But yes, you're in our prayers again. What is with all these fires going on? Okay, so I have preheated my oven to 375. And then you want to chop your spaghetti squash raw in half, kind of hard. You can poke it and microwave it for a little bit to make it softer to cut. But I didn't want to do that. I'm like, oh, let's take the knife. Do a good workout today, right? Ivana, hello from Holland. I just wanted to go to sleep. Then I saw you're going live. Yay! Now I know what I'll eat tomorrow for breakfast. Thank you for great recipe. Yay! So before you go to bed in Holland, you're gonna side this with half a protein for complete breakfast. So you get half a protein on top. I like to do like two ounces yogurt, then maybe two ounces nut, or not two ounces nut, that's way too much. So two ounces yogurt, that's a fourth of protein, and a half ounce of nuts sprinkled on top, that's really yummy. Or you could do all nuts or all yogurt, whatever you wanna do. But yes, you get a whole half a protein with this. You could have a separate protein on the side. But thanks for joining me from Holland. So fun having you here. So back to the spaghetti squash. So I cut it in half. You scoop out all the seeds and then I'll show you. I roasted the seeds too. That's like the fun part of not microwaving it because I'm not sure if you can microwave the seeds or roast the seeds after you microwave them. I'm not sure about that. You might, maybe. But you scoop out the seeds, then just lightly drizzle it with olive oil. Give it a little massage. Just kind of spread the olive oil around. Set it face down on a pan and roast it for like 45 minutes. You don't want to over roast it because you kind of want it to be not totally smushy because this is spaghetti squash you kind of want it a little bit spaghetti 
So that's what I did, and then this has been cooling just a little bit. That's why I can touch it. So I'm going to set this to the side, and let's take out our mug cakes. Or my little, they're not exactly mug cakes, but you can make it in a mug. Ooh, the microwave is dripping. Just take these things out. <gasps> they smell so good. So I might have said at the beginning of the video that this is a lunch recipe. It's not. I lied. This is not a lunch recipe. This is breakfast recipe. Because I had a different mug cake. That was a lunch recipe. This is a breakfast recipe. <laughs> Sorry about that. So I'm going to grab a little plate. Then you're going to want to take a knife and just kind of slide around the edges of your mug just to kind of loosen it. But these are pretty nice. These things have this swirl, so you can't really put a knife in there. You could, but I'm not going to. So then you just kind of dump it over, and it pops right out. Let's see if I tilt this. Is it going to fall off? Now that's a mug cake. And not just one, you get okay, here we go. two. You get two for the price of one. Or you could do it in one big mug. Now, you can test these in the mug because sometimes some microwaves are all different. We have a microwave at our church, and that thing takes forever to cook anything. My microwave does not. So if your center is still kind of like ooey gooey, just cook it a little bit longer. You can test it with a toothpick, just kind of poke it, especially if you like do it all in one mug. It might not cook through in four minutes. So you can always put it in a little longer. So there we made our mug cakes. Now you get half a protein still with this. <gasps> you could do two ounces Greek yogurt mixed with a half ounce of peanut butter. Make like a peanut butter fluff on top. Peanut butter and pumpkin do go together. Sounds crazy, but it's so good. Or you could do two ounces Greek yogurt, then drizzle half an ounce of peanut butter on top. I'm drooling just thinking about it. Maybe it's because this smells so good. But yeah, super easy. Who doesn't want to make it in the microwave? Super quick. Nicole, that looks amazing. Is this recipe in one of your volumes? This is not in a volume yet. This is brand spanking new. Just made this up a couple weeks ago, a week ago or so. So these are brand new pumpkin latte mug cakes. So good. But I think I do, I think volume eight or volume seven has a mug cake. And I think that's the first one in any of my cookbooks that has a mug cake in there yet. It's either volume seven or volume eight. I'm not exactly sure. You put recipes in there and then it takes a while for them to get published. And then you kind of forget what's in there because you're on to the next things. So it's in there somewhere. All right, so now we're gonna go on to our spaghetti squash lasagna bowl. I'm gonna put these over here. That'll be breakfast tomorrow. Pumpkin. So I'm going to take a fork and we're just gonna kind of break all our spaghetti squash. Let me grab a fork here. Ooh. This chair's in the way. So I'm just going to kind of, this is what it should look like when it's done cooking. It has just a little bit of like roasted spots from where it sat on the pan. So I'm just going to kind of take a fork and you're just going to kind of break it up like this. If you've never had spaghetti squash before, now's the time to try it. It's so good. Just the flavor of the squash by itself is delicious. So I'm going to turn my scale on. We're going to scoop this into the bowl. Doesn't have to be pretty because I'm thinking of putting it back in this squash and then it'll be like a lasagna boat. That's kind of fun. Will you put the recipe later? Yes, I will post the recipe as like a picture post also on my Pinterest and then I'll share it to the Facebook page. Otherwise, when this live video is finished, you can watch it again and again and again because it'll be posted on my Facebook, it'll be posted on my website. I will share it everywhere again. So you won't miss out on this recipe. You will find it and you'll get to have a mug cake for breakfast. When can we get the recipe? When I post it after this. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna keep scooping this out. Okay, so we got our spaghetti squash nice and cleaned out. Now this is gonna be for dinner. This is what I'm having for dinner today. So I thought, hey, why not show everyone how to make this? So I'm gonna put this on a plate for later. So this came out 
to 12.4 ounces, which is good because I'm going to add a little bit more than two ounces spaghetti sauce or marinara sauce. They're, to me, they're the same. I don't know really what the difference is of those. Hi from Illinois. Did you put pumpkin spice and chai spice or just one or the other? So I was going to do pumpkin spice, but then I saw the recipe said cardamom, which is not in pumpkin spice. That's in chai spice. So I did just chai spice. But if you really like pumpkin spice, put a little pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin spice in there because they're both really yummy. Connie, hey, Natalie, this is your friend Amy. Hi, Amy. Okay, so we have 12.4. Everybody remember that with me. So we get 2 point, no, nope, we get 1.6 ounces extra of marinara sauce because this is in points. It's a point ounceage decimal. It's in decimals. I kind of like that better because than the OXO scale because that doesn't like halves and fifths and fourths and then then it's really hard to be like, okay, how much more do I actually get? Because then I'm like, okay, we got three fourths. We got five eighths. I don't even know where we are anymore. Marcy, I have tried so many of the best ways to cook spaghetti squash, Pinterest pins, and it's always a fail. The strands are always so crunchy. Well, ooh, there's a hair in there. Let me show you. So you could roast your spaghetti squash a little bit longer. So this is kind of what it looks like. It's a little bit, they're kind of al dente, but you could roast it longer. Instead of, I roasted mine 375 for like 45 minutes, roast it for like an hour or roast it for like 50 minutes and then kind of see, because spaghetti squash is not going to be like Hubbard squash or like acorn squash where it's like smushy mushy. It's going to be a little more hard and a little more crunchy, but it shouldn't be that crunchy. It shouldn't be like chewing on raw, legit spaghetti. You know, as a kid, I used to do that. You take a strand of raw spaghetti and you chew on it because my neighbor did it and he was fun and we would play together and then we'd chew on spaghetti. But it shouldn't be like that. It should kind of be like al dente where it's got a little bit of crunch, but not really crunch. So roast it longer. That might help. I've never tried those recipes. So we get 1.6 ounces more marinara sauce. So we can do 3.6 ounces on top to finish off our vegetable. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to scoop it back in there because we just weighed it. But then is it going to fit? Yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to make it beautiful. It's kind of like where you scoop out a watermelon and then you put it back in the watermelon to make it look pretty and you make it like a fruit bowl. Well, that's what I'm doing with spaghetti squash. Scoop it all back in there. So you can use for this recipe, I'm going to use ricotta cheese because that's what I have. But cottage cheese works also unless you're going to count it as a fat. Cottage cheese cannot be counted as a fat. Whole milk ricotta cheese can be counted as a fat. Up to two ounces is a full fat protein. Not up to two ounces, two ounces is a full fat. Did I say full fat protein? It's just a full fat. I need to talk slower and think about my words, right? Anyways, so here we put our spaghetti squash back in our spaghetti. Slow down talking. Our squash back in the squash outside. What are you making today, Natalie? Well, Amy, you can find out by watching the video again. We're making a spaghetti squash lasagna bowl. Okay, so I'm going to zero this scale, and then I'm going to do, oh, we're going to take this off. The same bowl I, that I scooped my squash in is still clean. It's all going to go in one place anyways, so I'm going to use this again. So we're going to take our ricotta cheese, and we're going to do we're going to do two ounces ricotta cheese. I'm kind of making the proteins up as we go because it's kind of fun to be like, hmm, what else do I have in my fridge to top this with? So we're going to do two ounces ricotta cheese. Now this is where you make this taste good. So we're going to zero the scale. We're going to add some lemon juice. If you've never made like a lasagna, I have some lasagna recipes in my cookbooks, I was looking right before we started and I'm like, oh no, I only have a minute and I couldn't find one. But I want to say I did a spaghetti squash recipe. I'm not sure if it's in a cookbook yet. It might be. I'll have to look through the books and just kind of look at the recipe index and see. 
but to make ricotta really taste good, a little bit of lemon juice is amazing in it. So we're gonna do just like a splash or two. So that came to like 0.3 ounces. You could do less, you could do more. Then we're gonna spice it up. This is where we're gonna make it really taste good. So I have some garlic salt. And this is where Kathy with her, did you see her post on the recipe page where she has these really cool measuring spoons and it's not like half a teaspoon or a full teaspoon, whatever. It's by pinches. It says a pinch, a dash. Those are really cool. So this is where you can use these now, Kathy. So I'm going to take just a pinch of garlic salt, just kind of to taste. Then I'm going to do a pinch of garlic powder or onion powder works. The lasagna soup is so, so good. <gasps> Yay! That is one of my favorites too, lasagna soup. Oh, I made it and I'm like, this is so good. Pinch of onion powder. Then we're going to do a pinch of sea salt. Always sea salt. Can you ever have too much sea salt? You can, but it's so good. Pinch of sea salt. Pinch of basil. You could use fresh basil and chop it up really small. Then we're going to do a pinch of oregano. And see, it's kind of fun to do pinches because like your favorite flavors. I might not like oregano as much as you. You might be like, oh, oregano is my favorite. Do a big pinch of that. You can't really go wrong with spices. You can, but you can't really go wrong with these spices together. Pinch of parsley. No, I like parsley, so I'm going to do two pinches of parsley. Okay, then I'm going to set this over here. Then we're going to take our fork and we're going to mash this all together so it's nice and mixed. So we have this nice herb ricotta cheese mixture. It's going to just be so yummy. So this is what it looks like. I can tip this over because it's nice and like thick and creamy. And again, you could use ricotta or cottage cheese. So we're going to take our plate with our spaghetti squash and we're going to scoop this right on top. I'm going to get a spatula because we want to get every little bit of cheesy goodness. No cheese left behind. We're just going to kind of spread this on there. One time I forgot to put the lemon juice. I was making lasagna for supper. Uh, I think it was cabbage or uh, zucchini lasagna for supper, and I forgot the lemon juice. That made a big difference. It was like dry, and I'm like, wait, where did the flavor go in this? You could use a fresh lemon if you want to. I would just like to get the lemon juice because it's easier. Then I don't have to cut anything. I don't have to squeeze anything. I don't get any lemon zest, though. So I see everybody putting lemon zest on things, and I'm like, oh, I want lemon zest. Do they make like a spice that's just lemon zest, I might have to get that. So here's our ricotta mixture smudged on there. Tandolin, I need to get that pink scale. <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you. I got it off of Amazon. It's the Escali Primo, and it comes in all these really cute colors. My sister has a red one. I have a pink one. So now we're going to put our spaghetti sauce or marinara sauce. Now you could heat this up beforehand or just throw everything in the microwave. That's what I like to do. Or you could just heat it up in the oven, maybe even an air fryer. If you have one of those, just put it all in there, let it heat up. So I'm going to grab this spaghetti sauce. I knew I forgot something and that's what it was. It's in my fridge. I have a can that's open. And I grabbed some Parmesan cheese because Parmesan on lasagna is the bomb. It's so good. All right, now I'm going to zero our scale. So I had less than 14 ounces vegetable in here. I had 12.4. So I'm going to do 1.6 ounces extra of this to finish off my vegetable. Then I'm going to do two ounces on top of that because you can have condiment up to two ounces of spaghetti sauce free. So that's what I'm going to do. I just get the Bertoli organic. I try to eat organic as much as I can. Uh, this is olive oil, basil, and garlic. 
It does not have sugar in it at all. Oh, it does have sugar. At the very, very, very bottom, it has just a little bit of sugar. So just kind of look, read your ingredients. It's not in the top three, so it's okay. There's no flour in this at all. Here, I'll probably read and be like, oh man, there's flour in it too. I don't see any of that organic juice stuff. A little bit of sugar at the very bottom, but it's way down. I've been eating this stuff for years. This is like my favorite. It tastes so good. And there's like big hunks of tomato in there, which is kind of a plus. So I'm going to do 3.6 ounces. One. You could always roast some vegetables and have that on the side or have that on top. If you don't want to use more of your vegetable as the spaghetti sauce. Five. Aha. Perfect. Oh, this is looking so good. So now ricotta cheese. Parmesan triggers me. Oh no, I'm so sorry about that, Lois. Just pretend it's cheddar cheese. This is not Parmesan cheese. Don't eat this. I don't get the dried Parmesan cheese. To me, that's nasty. And I saw an article somewhere that said that there's like wood chips in it and it's some nasty stuff. And your ingredient list should not have to be this big for Parmesan cheese. This is like legit just cheese cheese that I get in the deli section at Walmart. Because in Midwest Minnesota, where I live, we have like a Walmart and Aldi's. That's about it. Kind of exciting, but what you get is what you find. And this has one, two, three ingredients. The less ingredients, the more I like things. So ricotta cheese can be either your fat or your protein. So a fat is two ounces. A protein would, a fat is two ounces full fat. And then two ounces is half a protein. So I'm going to do one ounce of this, and this could also be your fat or your protein also. So they're kind of, they both can be kind of flip-flopped. But you don't have to do cheese. You could do beans. You could do whatever protein you like, because this is the part where you kind of make it your own. Because the spices with the ricotta are just delicious. You wouldn't even have to do cheese. Okay, so that's one ounce. You could even do roasted chickpeas on top. That's delicious too. So here is our spaghetti squash lasagna bowl. I would probably top it. I don't know if I should tip it to show you. Can you see that? Do I, did I tip it? I'm not going to tip it. That's dangerous. Maybe I'll pick you up and I'll show you. Okay, so we'll do. Here we go. This is what it looks like. And then you could just dig in with a fork. I'm probably going to microwave this a little bit before I eat it. Well, of course, because it's not supper time right now. It's three in the afternoon here. So that's a little too early for me for supper. But here, let me show Instagram. Here's what it looks like. Isn't that beautiful? She's back. So that's it for this. So you get, with this, you get half a protein still. So I had made some... A loaded cauliflower soup and I made a bunch of bacon for that so I'm probably gonna do like an ounce of bacon that's a fourth of protein so I still get a whole nother fourth of a protein on this so you get a lot of food with this because this is all like just vegetable because we have half our protein with either the cheese or ricotta cheese whichever one or you don't have to use these at all just put marinara sauce make it your own you could do the spices just with the spaghetti sauce you could do that too and then you could either broil this in the oven for a little bit. That would make the top nice and like crispy, crunchy, and delicious. Or you could microwave it just a couple minutes. Or you could have your spaghetti squash really hot when you're doing this, and then it'll kind of warm everything. Or if you like your food cold, eat it cold. I mean, spaghetti squash is good any way you can get it. But that's our spaghetti squash bowl. So we get half a protein with this. And we get half a protein with these cute little mug cakes. So I think we're done. I'm probably going to top this with an ounce of bacon and then I have some roasted chickpeas that I kind of like to put on things or on the side or just eat them plain. They're so good. So I'm going to have like a half ounce of those, uh, one ounce of bacon on top or whatever we have left, maybe even a dollop of Greek yogurt. That's always so yummy too. I use Greek yogurt like sour cream. I use it in recipes, in like sweet recipes. I use it for everything. That stuff is like the best. I use it a lot. That's why there's so many 
like Greek yogurt things in all my cookbooks. But anyways, thank you for cooking with me. It's so fun having you guys in the kitchen with me. Oh, I love cooking with you. And you in California and Oregon, you're in our prayers. We are praying for you with these fires and that your family will be safe and that your houses will be safe also where you live and your community and that these fires will be stopped now and that your states would be safe again. So we are praying for you and exciting news. So through the month of September, that's what month we're in, through the month of September, I am like, I am hearing all these things on Facebook about human trafficking, children trafficking, that these kids are being saved, that these kids are being kidnapped, all this stuff. And I just, I couldn't sit back and do anything anymore. So my mom found this thing online and it's called Operation Underground Railroad. And she was telling me about it and I'm like, oh, I have to get in on this. This is so amazing. So you can look them up on Facebook, Operation Underground Railroad. And it's these guys and ladies, these people that were in the FBI, that were in the military, that were in like the CIA, they were like these really cool people. And they left their jobs, they left their retirement to start their own thing here because uh, the government and all this stuff and the FBI, they, they wouldn't let them do what they needed to do freely. There were so many restrictions. So they thought, you know what, we're just gonna start our own thing. So what they do is, they go in and they save these kids. They do it online, they do it in person, all around the world. And then they don't only save these kids from this human trafficking, but they like have aftercare. A lot of these guys and a lot of these ladies, they've adopted tons of kids because when they save them, they're like, you know what, you're coming home with me. I would do the same thing. That's why I don't think I could work in like an orphanage or do this because I would be like, okay, all you kids are coming home with me. I have no room, but you're coming home with me. So that's what these guys did. And they are saving kids all the time. If you look them up, they show all the time, we just save five kids here. We just save three kids here. So that's what they do, Operation Underground Railroad. So how you can get in on this, because I thought, hey, I don't want to be the only one in on this, is through the month of September, every single one of my book sales on my Facebook shop or my website, which is weightlossrecipes.com, no, weightlossrecipescookbook.com, every single one of those sales, ebook or physical copies, 10% of every single one of those sales is going to go towards Operation Underground Railroad so we can save our kids. So we don't just get yummy recipes, but we're making a difference also. So that's some exciting things in September. So thank you guys for joining me and cooking with me. And I love all your comments and hearing from you. It's so fun. Lois, thank you, Natalie. Sending prayers to those in need. Yes, definitely. We need to pray for our kids. We need to pray for our country, not just our country, but all the countries that this is happening, that we need to do something and we can do it in prayer and we can do it with helping Operation Underground Railroad. And I know there's probably so many other organizations that are doing things also. So yes, we need to do something about it. Nicole, I love that. Oh, thank you, Nicole. So yeah, we're gonna make a difference together. You can find more information out on my website. I posted like a video. You can find them on YouTube. You can find them on Facebook, Operation Underground Railroad. Oh, it's O-U-R. So yeah, they're really cool. They have merchandise. They have things where you can learn more about this. So that's what's going on. This is our recipes today. I want to do this again next Thursday. This is kind of like a new thing I want to do every Thursday. Just kind of, hey, let's cook together. I don't know. Let's cook dinner. Let's cook lunch. It'll be really fun. Jamie, have you seen the movie on Netflix about Operation Underground Railroad? There's a movie. What? It's called Operation. I don't know how to pronounce that. And you said you spelled it wrong. So, I mean. We both did that. Oh, that would be amazing. I personally, I can't watch and listen to like these testimonies about, oh, about the horrible things these kids go through because it just kind of like stays on me. And then I just can't like stop thinking about it. I know it's bad and I know things are happening, but I don't like to know all the gory details. So, but that sounds like an amazing amazing thing on Netflix. Definitely check that out. That is so cool. Tandalin, I love Operation Underground Railroad. You can get certified through them on what to look for when it comes to child trafficking. Yes, 
my friend at church, she just did that and she's going to teach me how to do it too. That is so amazing because you don't know what to look for. There was this, it was years ago, this girl, something happened, she's from a wealthy family, whatever, these people found out where her bedroom was and stuff and they kidnapped her. Then they like put this mask on her, they put all this stuff on her, like this outfit and they changed her outfit. She was only a couple miles down the road. They had kidnapped her, it was this horrible whole situation, but she was just a couple miles down the road. If somebody would have just recognized that, maybe years earlier she would have been saved. So things like that, I'm okay with like outside details, like okay, yep, but I don't want to know like all the little gory details. But yeah, that would be an amazing thing to do. Yes, definitely check them out. They're online, they're everywhere. I'm hearing about them more and more. And I'm hearing hearing all these other people saying, oh, I love Operation Underground Railroad. I'm like, hey, I just found out about this. So I'm getting in on it too, and you can too. So definitely check them out. Oh, it's, it's Toussaint, pronounced like Toussaint. Okay, so it's called ne Operation Underground Operation Tucson. That's what it's called on Netflix. Their little documentary thing. So yeah, check it out. Maybe they have it on YouTube too. That is so cool. Thank you for sharing that with me. Yeah, and I'll try to keep things posted and updated on things that I find out. Like I did post one thing where all these kids were saved and I'm like, yes, we need to know these good things that are happening because the media is not talking about it as much as they should. So hopefully things are changing in our country that we're going to finally do something about this and stop this. But yeah, back to the food. This is really fun. This video will be posted again. I'll be posting the recipe for the pumpkin latte mug cake. I had to think about what it's called. So I'll be posting that soon. Oh, Jamie, shoot, it's Amazon Prime. Okay, so it's not Netflix, which is probably better anyways, because Netflix has been putting some very horrible things on their site. So Amazon Prime. Find it on there, the video. That is so cool. Thank you for sharing that, Jamie. And thank you for cooking with me. That's all we're going to cook today. So next week, Thursday, I want to do this again at 2.30. That's just kind of a nice time because it's after lunch. Then I'm not starving making food that smells amazing. And I'm like, ah, I can say no to bites of that. So give me some ideas what we should make next. Maybe, I don't know. Should we make a cookie? Should we make a chickpea cookie or something? something fun. So give me ideas what we should make next. If it's a recipe from one of my cookbooks that you're like, hey, I want to see you make that recipe. Comment below or send me a message. I love hearing from you guys. It's so fun and I love seeing all the foods that you make. I'm like, oh, that looks so good. Oh, that looks so good. I drool a little on my phone, but it's definitely worth it to see all your amazing creations you make and your little twists on things. It's so fun. Okay, it's hard to leave because it's so fun cooking with you guys. I, I never want to leave my friends. But it was fun cooking today. So this is going to be my supper. This is my breakfast. Then I'm on my own for lunch, you know. Then I'll probably create something new. Be like, hey, maybe I'll make something new. Today I made a pumpkin no-bake cheesecake. And that was really good. That was yummy. So that recipe will be coming in a cookbook soon. And I'm working on the holiday cookbook where it's every single like holiday recipe in one cookbook. So I'm working on that. It's almost finished. Volume eight is almost here. So new things are coming. Look for yummy things in the fall. Sweetie, please cook something savory connected with fall and Thanksgiving. <gasps> Ooh, okay. We're gonna make a soup. How about that? That's savory and kind of fall and Thanksgiving. I like that. Yes, make lots, make a coleslaw. Ooh, yes. Okay, that's our plan. We're going to make coleslaw and a soup next week. I have, oh, how about my carrot, carrot apple soup. I made a carrot apple soup. That was oh, so good. I think I actually have that as a sample recipe on my website, weightlossrecipescookbook.com, in the sample recipes tab of the menu. So look up that recipe. Maybe we'll make that one next week. Thursday, we're going to make soup and coleslaw. Maybe something else will come up. Be like, hey, we'll change the menu a little bit. So I'll keep you posted. Thank you for joining with me and thank you for cooking with me. No random crazy things happen today, but you never know. Maybe stranger danger will come to my door again, or maybe I'll start sobbing over some onions. You never know what's going to happen next week. Maybe 
I'll have to leave and be like, hey, I got to use the bathroom like I did that one time. That was embarrassing, but it was fun. Makes life an adventure, and you guys get to come with me. So fun. All right, praying for you guys. Blessings to you guys. Tandalin, I'm so excited for volume eight. Yes, me too. I'm so excited. I'm like, can it be here already? It takes so long with all the printing delays and stuff. Usually it would take like one to two weeks. Now it's like, uh, it's coming. It's going to be here soon. And then you guys are going to get your books. Something to eat as in munch and make. Soups make us hungry after a while. Soups can make you hungry unless you make them like a creamy soup and you get enough protein and stuff in there. Yeah, maybe we can make something else. So I'll look. I'll look through my recipe, see what I have. We can make something savory like, I don't know, something pumpkin-y because I have a can of pumpkin. I might use it up by then, but maybe not. So I'll have to see what I have. I'll look up something for you, sweetie. We're going to make something delicious next week, 2.30, right back here. So fun having you guys. All right. I guess I have to go now and leave all my friends. I'll see you next week. Okay, I'll look forward to that. So it'll be easier to say goodbye as long as I know as I'm seeing you next week. All right, love you guys, praying for you, and may you live deliciously free <laughs> with joy. Natalie.